many locations claim to be overrun with ghosts, spirits and demons. In the UK, we have a long heritage of records spanning back hundreds of years, ancient stone circles and remains of wooden worship sites, even forests that have been around for centuries. In this episode, I want to explore the spooky sightings from Corfe Castle. It's reported that you can see several spirits among the ruins, especially at night. So, let's find out more. The fortification was built by William the Conqueror. It dates to the 11th century and commands a gap in the Purbeck Hills. It's out on a peninsula of land on the Dorset coast. The building is considered to be one of the earliest castles to be constructed from stone, when most others at the time were still timber and earth. 400 years later, it was sold by the royal family and ended up being purchased by a knight. Then, another century went by before it was sold on again to Sir John Banks. Famously, during the Civil War, Banks' wife, Lady Mary, led the defences at the castle. In fact, she led the castle to success through two sieges, but sadly it fell to a third, ending in a full-scale assault. Parliament decreed that the castle had to be destroyed, and so, after standing tall for six centuries, the walls were demolished. Since then, the Banks family owned the land for a further several centuries before Ralph Banks bequeathed the entire estate to the National Trust in 1982. The family had been living at their main property in a nearby town for several hundred years at this point. Corfe Castle had remained in a state of complete ruin. So many military events took place there and a single family owned it for so long that the ghostly activity is considered to be very strong at the site. The most frequently seen spirit is that of a white lady. She reportedly appears decapitated, roaming the grounds. However, there are conflicting theories about who she may have been. Some say it's Lady Mary Banks herself. After the sieges in the Civil War, she was betrayed by one of her own people in 1646. That's how the castle was taken. Others say that it is in fact the woman who was the traitor and helped Cromwell succeed in assaulting Corfe Castle. People describe having chills when they see her and she fades away into nothing. She's often seen by the castle gate. Could this be where she was when she realised the castle was lost? Interestingly, flickering lights have been seen along the ramparts of the castle, where there are no longer platforms or stairs to walk on. These appear to be lanterns or will-o'-the-wisps. Local people and ghost hunters believe that they could be the souls of the royalists who were killed defending their castle against Oliver Cromwell's men. One of the more eerie spirits that has been observed in the area is that of a weeping child. Apparently, visitors have heard a child crying and even seen a small boy in the distance sobbing. He is believed to be a child belonging to the fourth Lord of Bramber. The Lord was not well liked by the King and his family were sent to the castle where they were starved to death. A few legends are attached to the castle site too. An earlier building stood before the stone one that was built in 1066. In this first fortification, during Anglo-Saxon times, it's said that 18-year-old heir to the throne, Edward the Martyr, was killed on the grounds of the estate. This was at the instruction of his stepmother, who wanted to bring about the succession of her own son. More heinous murders took place at a castle. In the 1200s, it's believed that King John captured 22 French prisoners of war and he locked them away in the castle dungeons where they also starved to death. Then, in 1327, Edward II was imprisoned at Corfe Castle prior to being murdered. This tragic and bloody history led to the site being named one of the most haunted castles in 2021. 